if you want to be part of one of the largest research communities in physics and mathematics in Sweden, then you've come to the right place. Hello everyone, my name is Martina. I am an education officer at the Faculty of Science here at the University of Gothenburg. And I work with our international programs uh, at the faculty and exchange studies at the faculty here in uh, with, at the university. I uh, would like to show you our program for today. So I am joined by Yalma and Mats, who are both coordinators for our programs uh, that we will be talking about today. Then we'll give you a short introduction of Gothenburg, uh, the admission system, how you apply, uh, how the study system works, how you find housing in Gothenburg, and uh, our welcome program and everything else that there is for international students or for Swedish students attending the program. And we will finish off the uh, information part with a Q&A session. So just the little housekeeping rules. We will talk first, do our presentations, and open up the floor for questions later. You are more, well, more than welcome to put your questions in the Q&A box below already if you want to. But uh, just be aware that we will not answer questions during, during the presentation. So with that being said, I would like to hand over uh, to Yalma, who will be talking about the mathematical sciences program. Yeah, uh, so I will just say a few words. So I'm, a, I'm a professor of mathematics and uh, responsible for this program. So this is an international program. Uh, and if you take it, you can choose between five different specializations. So we have mathematics, we have applied mathematics, uh, we have mathematical statistics, uh, and we have financial mathematics. So if you choose financial mathematics, you will take both uh, courses at the mathematics department and also some advanced courses at the School of Business. Uh, and finally, we have statistical learning and AI, uh, which is about using mathematical methods to, well, make computers behave in a way that you could consider intelligent. Uh, and then, then you will also take some advanced courses in computer science. Um, and I will not go into really all the courses that you can choose from, but uh, I would ask, just like to say that at this program, you have a lot of freedom to design your own program and choose courses according to your interests. Um, so that, that's all I will say right now. Yes, thank you. So if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A and we can answer them later. So uh, Mats will talk about our master's programs in physics. Yes, hello everyone. I'm Mats Granat. I'm associate professor at the physics department and responsible for our two uh, master's programs. Uh, both of these programs are uh, run jointly with uh, Chalmers University, at least for the part of the program, which are uh, consists of mandatory courses. Um, maybe we can actually skip to the next slide, which is the one I prepared, uh, which is a pretty dense slide perhaps, but I wanted to give a flavor of the two programs by um, pointing out some of the key courses. And some of these are elective, some are compulsory. Uh, well, or I would say strongly suggested, they're not strictly speaking compulsory. But so the, first of all, the complex adaptive systems program is a uh, program in complex systems. It has uh, content in machine learning and algorithms. It's not very physics heavy. It's more towards uh, maybe not too far from what a program in computer science and AI might look at, uh, look like rather. Yes, uh, and then we have the physics program, which I think is a very nice and modern physics program. As I said, run jointly with the Chalmers Physics Department. Um, there are lots of uh, basic um, fundamental and applied physics courses and also courses towards modern topics such as machine learning and uh, 
yeah, Bayesian inference, uh, quantum computing, etc. Yeah, so I think we have two very nice programs here that you're very welcome to apply for. I think I'll stop there. Yes, then we'll hand over the word to Ossian, who has joined us, uh, who is the student, student here at the moment. Uh, yes, hello, thank you. Sorry for the noise in the background. I just had a lecture. Uh, so yeah, so I'm studying the second year on the master's program of physics at the uh, University of Gothenburg. Um, I already thought about what to say here, but for the first year, it was mostly uh, over on Zoom due to, due, due to the pandemic, of course. But now we're starting to have more and more stuff uh, on campus again. Uh, so right now, for example, I am taking two courses. I'm taking computational physics, and I'm also taking a uh, astrophysics course in radio astronomy and interferometry. Um, so yeah, as probably uh, Professor Granat mentioned earlier, I just joined. So I'm not sure, but there are different like types of um, how do you say tracks you can take or not take. You can always mix them up a little bit, and that's a little bit of what I have been doing. So I've been taking courses in material physics, I've been taking courses in computational physics and even nanophysics and a little bit of complex adaptive systems, one course from that track. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, that's all I can come up with to say right now. Uh, I guess I can answer questions <laughs> later on. Um, so yeah, um, uh, thank you for listening. <laughs> That sounds good, Ossian. We'll come back to you later with questions for sure. Um, Johanna, you're, you're up. Yes, my name is uh, Johanna Giske and I am the student counselor at the Department of Physics. And I am responsible for the programs Complex Adaptive Systems and Physics Master Program. So I would just like to say something very short about the application process. So when you apply for uh, physics uh, master programs or also mathematics, um, you all programs are applied through university admissions.se. And uh, to apply for the program, you will need a bachelor degree, uh, which means you will have to have 180 credits um, from the university and 90 credits should be in your main field of subject. Uh, main field of study so it should be either for physics if you study uh, apply for the physics master program and if you apply for the complex adaptive systems you will need uh, either a bachelor degree in mathematics natural sciences or you can also have uh, a bachelor degree in engineering um, and important to know is that you need uh, sufficient knowledge in mathematics so uh, and also programming to apply for the program. And if you are unsure about, if you have the right knowledge from your bachelor degree, we are really happy to help you um, look into your bachelor de degree to see if you, you have the right knowledge, which is better than coming, starting the program and realizing it was uh, a bit uh, too hard, uh, which can be sometimes the case since some, uh, most of our bachelor programs in Sweden do have a lot of, for example, programming and uh, and if you don't have this knowledge, yeah, the program uh, usually is a bit too hard. Um, you also need to know uh, to have uh, English sticks, which is this, uh, you can receive either through studying at an English speaking university, your bachelor program, or you can do a TOEFL or IELTS test. Um, yes. So um, uh, we don't. For the for the physics masters, we don't look into um, the selection to the program is uh, is credits, uh, so we we don't look into recommendation letters or CV or something like that. So we only look if you have the right amount of credits. So um, if you have un over 165 credits, we uh, the selection is random, so everyone has the same chance to get accepted. Um, you should apply before the 17th of January and all supplementary documentation should be handed in before the 1st of February. And also if you have to pay a tuition fee or an application fee, I mean, you need to hand in this application fee before the 1st of February. 
and uh, you will get a result or like um, uh, acceptance letter on the 7th of April. So uh, yeah, you can uh, switch to the next slide. So here you have some contact information and we are really happy if you contact us. I, I have uh, usually contact with all international students during their study time at uh, our university at our department and also uh, usually we have some contact before applying just to yeah, to check if everything is okay and stuff like that. so um, i'm your contact person for physics and if you want to contact mathematics you you my colleague is called sonia Gurk. if you have questions about tuition fee uh, we have a uh, a department that only handles these questions and also scholarships so you can see the email addresses on this slide. Thank you. Great, then I would like our student ambassadors that have joined us here today to say a couple of words about how it is to actually study in Gothenburg, um, how to find housing, yes. things like that. So please. Yeah, uh, well, hello, um, I'm Faisa, and I am currently studying molecular biology at GU, and I'm from Bangladesh. Um, I would like to begin by saying why I chose GU. It's because, as Martin previously mentioned, it's because of the extensive research opportunities that GU offers. If you, work in, uh, if you walk through Gothenburg, the city, um, you will come across bodies or institutions who are either directly or indirectly associated with GU in active research, whichever field it is. Um, the second big reason is uh, sustainability. So GU invests under sustainability. And one of the big examples I love giving is um, when you print a paper, uh, maybe a course material, um, and, and the printer says that for one tree taken down, GU plants three more. So that's one of the ways sustainability is uh, promoted uh, by GU. And uh, the other reason as a non-European student, for me, um, Sweden can be expensive uh, in terms of tuition fees, but GU has a host of uh, scholarships that you can apply to and you can get access to. So for example, I'm a recipient of the Axel Adler scholarship that takes care of all tuition and made uh, a Swedish education affordable for me. And the bonus uh, about studying in Gothenburg would definitely be the archipelagos during the summer and the sheer diversity of, uh, in the population. I mean, there are more non-Swedes, I would, I would say, than Swedes in, in, in Gothenburg. Uh, and that's lovely. Uh, moving on uh, to uh, the education system and living in Gothenburg. Um, First, probably I would begin with the city itself. And like I mentioned, there's the, the sheer diversity uh, of Gothenburg is very, very impressive. You will find students from all walks of life as well as a lot of different nationalities. And it's a very student-friendly city. So the public transport, for example, is excellent. You can um, access any corner of the city using the public transport and you also have um, nature all, all around the city. So if you wanna take a walk, it's very easy to access a park or a lake. Uh, so the city itself is very, very student friendly. Uh, and then moving on, uh, we can talk a little about, I think accommodation and, and uh, the coursework really. Uh, I'll begin with the coursework. So, one unique system because I'm an international student. So for me, one difference to, uh, would be the fact that you can only take one full-time course at a time and one by one full-time course, I mean 15 credits. But then again, there are also other courses that are 50% of the course load. So they would count as 7.5 credits. In those cases, you can take two at a time. And master's programs are usually two years, which is a total of 120 European credits and four semesters. Um, and you finish off your degree writing a thesis. And um, one, of, one, one of the best parts of the, of the uh, program is you can 
decide how many credits to dedicate for your thesis, somewhere between 30 to 60, which is uh, one semester, six months to a year, um, and evaluation. So, so uh, each course is designed a little differently, but on the whole, you have a one major exam at the end of the course, but then you also have other um, components like quizzes and presentations and lab reports and literature review. All of these are designed to build our skills. And then um, grades. So um, grading system dif differs from faculty to faculty. The faculty I'm studying for, the Faculty of Science, we have three grades, pass, fail, and pass with distinction. So if, around, if you score around 60% on the whole, you pass 60% or above, you pass with the G. If you score below 60, that's a fail. And depending from course to course, if you score somewhere uh, between 80 to 85 or higher, you pass with distinction and it's, it can be a, a little difficult. It is actually a little difficult to pass with distinction, but it's worth it uh, to put the effort. And um, a really good thing about our, our courses are you can retake if, for example, uh, if you fall sick or a personal tragedy hits and you don't do well in your exam, you can sign up for a retake within a week of the grade, um, uh, within a week of, uh, of your grade coming out. And the, uh, our study counselors, uh, there are a lot of study counselors. so. And they are really wonderful. So they're just one email away or one call away. You, if you have any decisions to make regarding which courses to take or how many credits to dedicate for a thesis, as well as what to do after graduation, they are always wonderful and helpful. So I would recommend reaching out to them. Thank and, you, Faisa. Uh, I think I will let uh, Helena talk about the accommodation part. Uh, we'll get back to you in a while. So, hey, my name is Elena, and I study here in Gothenburg my master's program in organic and medicinal chemistry, but I do have a double bachelor in chemistry and in the mathematics. I just decided at the end that for my master's, I wanted to go in the direction of chemistry, but it's not that I don't like mathematics, it's just I prefer chemistry. Um, I decided to pick Gothenburg more about the aspect of the city. There are still some things that I like about the program. For example, that it's known as a sustainable master's degree. For example, when you work with chemistry, there's a lot of um, trash who is not good for the environment, and they always try to better that so that it's not that, um, how do you say it, um, bad for the environment. And also because we have more smaller groups in the courses and we interact a lot with each other. So there's a lot of more personal relationships with the professors than I used to have it in Germany. But I did also pick Gothenburg because it's a multicultural city with a lot of sightseeing options. And because it's also a bigger city, but you are so near to nature at the same time. So you can go like, each money each morning and going like for a lake and take a walk around there or just like go bathing in the summer not in the winter and just so much options that i found like it's the perfect mix between nature and city and another reason why i picked it because the streets are really known to be open-minded people and when i came here I found that to be true. I found that also, for example, the professors, if you're having problems, they always want to help you. And they don't want to put like extra problems in your way or saying like, no, then you just fail. They kind of always want to try to make you succeed and you feel that. Now about the housing in Gothenburg, um, it is known to be a little bit more difficult to get housing here. But I, for me, it wasn't. I'm gonna be honest on that. I got some options and I will just like say the tricks that I had, they're really helpful. First, you can register on SDS in the student bus, uh, like in the SDS, that's kind of like student housing from our university. At the same time, 
you can book the direct and the direct is the one I think for the next month that's gonna be open and system minutes is also for example corridor rooms that also get open at the time so you can always find like something for the next time but also for more in advance what you can also do is sublease from SGS but that I will come to later if you join and the whole system about SGS is that you have queue time and they go about the queue time so if you have enough time you get can get a housing there and for getting also like more queue time you can for example join a student union or something like this if you don't find something on SGS you can still find on Facebook housing there are a lot of groups that can help you through that and also on block it that's something where people sublease housing but sometimes it's a sublease for more than one year and i got a house from that and it was a little bit more outside the city but i have a beautiful city all over gotham a beautiful view all over gothenburg so maybe it also has like positive sides to live a little bit more outside so don't limit your search to the city center and yeah there's also a, like a film that you can see on the slide before about that so if you go to this sds and you want to find an apartment there you will find first the apartment type like if it's a single one or if it's shared many times it's the single one that means you, that you have a kitchen for yourself you have a bathroom for yourself and your room but it also can happen that you have a share so you have still sometimes a bathroom for yourself, but sometimes you also share the bathroom. Um, the rent price, it's cheaper than if you find something, for example, on block it. How long um, is your estimated waiting time, like how your place in the queue is, but also you can find like options in the housing about parking, gym, storage and stuff. If you didn't find something at the beginning, it is way easier to find housing when you are on the city than when you're trying to do it for example from germany because many people want to see you before so you can stay at the beginning at hostels so you should check them with the tourist center or for example like you can book an airbnb at the beginning for example like two to three weeks it's maybe a little bit more expensive but when you are in the city, you normally get also much options, much more options to view a home because they also can then see your face and they see if they trust you and something like this. My tip is when you apply for a sublease, just tell a lot about yourself because the people are giving their homes to you. So they kind of want to know who you are. That's my tip, just talk a lot about yourself so they can get a picture about who you are, especially but especially if you are trying to find something through Facebook or through Blockit, like for sublease or something similar, you need to be um, beware of that they can maybe be scamming you. So never transfer any money before you see the place. That will be also my tip because otherwise it can go wrong. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Helena. I just want to mention quickly also that uh, before you come here, there are, um, or when you get here, there are welcome events. Uh, now they have been a little bit limited during COVID, obviously, and digital events, but hopefully we can go back to having the big events again and um, have more people on, com on campus for next autumn um, because you get really good information from our welcome services about studies, uh, how to open a bank account, how to register for your personal number when coming to Sweden and then also an affair where you can meet the, the different uh, gyms, the different student unions, and so on and so on. So there are activities throughout the semester, not only for international students, obviously, and um, there's a co collaboration with Unimed and Move to Gothenburg that uh, does events for both universities that are 
here in Gothenburg. And since both the departments do physics and mathematics anyways, are shared with Shalmas University. And this is a great possibility for you as a new student in Gothenburg to attend these events. So we have come to the Q&A part of this uh, session. Please, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the Q&A box. Um, otherwise, I would uh, like to go ahead maybe and ask uh, Ossian if you could tell us a little bit more about why you chose the University of Gothenburg for your program and what what are your plans for the future? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I forgot to mention that earlier, but uh, I'm born and raised here in Gothenburg, so I didn't really have to move anywhere to be able to take the education that I wanted. So, uh, so it was an easy pick for me because of that, partially. Um, I did my bachelor's at the University of Gothenburg at the Department of Physics, uh, and I decided to continue with their master's program. And I feel like the best part of their master program is essentially the, the liberty of choice because you have a lot of courses you can pick from. Uh, and uh, with different types of uh, yeah, tracks, as I mentioned earlier. And as a person who just wants to go crazy and do all the stuff, that was the perfect choice for me because at a lot of other universities, you don't necessarily have that freedom. Uh, and sorry, what was the second question? what uh, what do you want to do in the future do you have an idea mm. yet where you want to oh. end up <laughs> uh, no i have no idea <laughs> so uh, but yeah I'm, I'm i'm sort of thinking about maybe trying to apply for any phd uh, and that might be possible to do in in that case experimental physics not so much theoretical physics uh, but i'll have to figure that out uh, pretty soon <laughs> Yes. Uh, Mats, is there anything that you would like to add? Maybe the flexibility of the program, the possibilities afterwards, uh, PhD possibilities, anything that's worth mentioning? Um, yeah, sorry. Trying to... Yeah, I think as uh, Ossian is saying, I mean, that's a big strength of the program, especially when you're studying at Gothenburg University, you can really select, actually studying at Chalmers, it's a little bit stricter. They're, they have mandatory courses, so you have to take a number of courses, but at GU, you can actually, following one of our programs, mix pretty much as you like. So I think that's an advantage. Mm. Yeah. Elma, is that uh, also true for uh, mathematics? That it's uh, what, what's the difference of studying at Gothenburg or uh, University of Gothenburg versus Schalmers? How much do students actually mix? How does it work practically? Yeah, so in, in, in mathematics, I would say that almost all advanced courses are joint between these two universities. So the, I mean, the students meet each other uh, a lot. Yeah. Uh, and then, then I agree with Mats that. Uh, the, the Chalmers students have a bit a, a bit less flexibility on their, in their program. Um, so you should apply to the University of Gothenburg is what you're saying? Yeah, I think it's a very good idea. Uh, That's what I heard, at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Faith, uh, we, we talked a little bit about uh, scholarships and you mentioned that you are a scholarship recipient. Uh, are there any other tips that you can uh, or advice that you can give uh, international students that are non-EU students that are, are, have to pay tuition fees here? Yes, so um, the scholarships, uh, once you file your application um, uh, around January 17th, uh, if you're eligible for a scholarship, uh, the university itself will reach out to you via email uh, around the first week of February. And all you have to do is just express your interest in, in the form and uh, enter an, a statement of purpose. So I would really recommend writing a good and solid statement of purpose for uh, the scholarship and then you file it. 
So you basically don't need a reference letter, so you don't have to go through the hassle of acquiring a reference letter. Uh, and you, it's very easy. The, the scholarship application is very easy and the university reaches out to you. And uh, the other thing I'd like to uh, clarify is uh, sometimes as happened in my case, uh, they might give you a scholarship decision even before uh, you get the decision for um, a confirmed place at the university. So please do not uh, confuse one for the other. Uh, because there are two different uh, application processes and two different decisions to be made. Um, and other than just uh, the tuition fee scholarship, the Excel Adler, there are a host of other scholarships that you can apply to once you've uh, finished one semester at the university. And you can also go for exchange programs. So that's a, a whole another uh, set of opportunities and that comes with grants. So that is lovely. Yeah, that was good that you mentioned that. So uh, both the departments have their own uh, exchange agreements with the universities, mainly uh, within uh, Europe, but also some overseas agreements. And if you are going, even as a non-EU student, you can go on exchange during your master's program and you will still be eligible for the Erasmus funding, which is, uh, practically a scholarship for going on exchange within the EU. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, we talked about the admission process and I, I think we actually had some Swedish uh, attendees here. So how would it be if, if, you, if I'm a Swedish or EU student, Johanna, maybe you, you're good with, uh, with those dates. When, when should I apply if I'm applying from Sweden? for the master's programs. Yes, if you apply uh, as an EU student, uh, you should apply before the 19th of April. So it will open around the 15th of March, 2022. And then you will have until the 19th of April and uh, to hand in your application. And you should also uh, uh, hand in supporting documentation uh, until the 21st of June. So if you're still in your bachelor program, you will have actually until even later, but uh, you should, uh, I think the 5th of July. You can have in your, um, um, we got a question, uh, if it's possible to work as a teaching assistant at the university during your studies. Uh, I know it's possible in some other countries. Anybody, Yalma? Uh, yes, at, at the mathematics, mathematics department, we have some students who work as teaching assistants, but it's, it's not automatic. It's, it's um, a, a few of the students get kind of this opportunity. Um, yeah, things like that work a little bit differently in Sweden. So for example, Helena and Faisa, who are joining us here today, they actually uh, applied to, the job as student ambassadors mm. um, and you have to go really through like a normal job description it's not like a unpaid uh, thing that you do on the side of your studies it's something that you actually apply for and then obviously get paid for as well but um, it's not like in other countries where you maybe are a little bit more free to jump in and help out yeah maybe i can say one thing about that when you if you move from outside of sweden to sweden and you don't have one course at the like at one place you like at the same at one time but you are more used of, of parallel courses you kind of feel of overwhelmed at the beginning the amount that's like on the first course so maybe you should just like not apply at the beginning, but like first get used to the studying and the new system here, and then maybe apply. Because it was kind of really different how I was used to studying, because you also have more tests, you have everything at once. So I would not come here and hope to get a job right away, but concentrate more on your studies first. That's uh, good advice, definitely. Um, 
we talked about the exchange possibilities. I mentioned that. Um, I don't know. We have, do we have any more questions in the Q and A? Uh, Ocean, anything that you would like to uh, mention? Uh, why why people should apply to uh, to the program? What uh, what does a, a normal study week for you look like? Um, is it lectures every day? Is it uh, lab every week? Or how how does a, a normal week look like? Uh, well, now when we're more on campus, I have essentially at least one lecture a day, I'd say. And then maybe they add in an exercise session or two a week, uh, one per course, essentially. Uh, so in contrary to uh, some of the other students here, I, you study two courses at the same time uh, at, a, at a 50% uh, pace rate, so to speak. Uh, so you have like these dedicated uh, exam weeks uh, after about roughly 10 weeks from the start of the course. So you usually have two exams then, which can be quite tough. Uh, but a normal week, um, it, it really depends on what courses you pick, um, how hard or not so hard it can be or stuff like that. So it's a very difficult question to answer. Yeah. Um, if we don't have more questions in the Q&A box, I think I would just like to mention uh, that we have uh, more webinars coming up um, in our other study field. So I will send this presentation to everybody that registered. But what I would like to point out are these um, yeah, links to, uh, to the internet. Uh, the recording of this will be on our YouTube channel, uh, GU, the university has their own YouTube channel. So this will um, be on there in a couple of days. And I would also like to urge you to follow our student ambassadors. We have seven international student ambassadors that are active on Instagram, on ScienceGU. They will uh, show you what it's like to be an international student here at the university, or if you're a Swedish student, uh, you, you can follow them as well, obviously. Um, we also just uh, launched a virtual tour of the faculty, meaning that you have uh, the possibility to see what it looks like in, inside our buildings, what the labs look like, um, what the cafe at the campus looks like that you will be studying at. So make sure to have a look at that as well. If you uh, uh, apply to the university and are admitted, the university, uh, the whole universities uh, will invite you to a Facebook group for newly admitted students. So that's a really good way of maybe find somebody that you would like to share housing with, uh, somebody that's also starting the same program as you or has the same interests just to have somebody to talk to before you get here is uh, it's kind of safe and nice to uh, to have somebody before you start here and a couple more links to other information that could be useful um, I also have a, just a slide with all our other international master's programs so if somebody is interested they can have a look at that. And if there are no more questions, I think I would like to just say thank you on behalf of all of us. And um, that email address at the bottom of the page is where you will reach me and the international student ambassadors. So if you have um, any questions about studying here, uh, contact us or the study counselors of the program, obviously. So with that being said, I think we uh, will say goodbye and uh, 
hope to see you in Gothenburg next autumn. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye.